All right, getting the snow and ice off the quilt of the tent. That way when it melts, because of the heat inside, it doesn't melt right down through and, and make drips. So one thing about these huts is even though they're insulated, they are not waterproof. They're no good at all in the rain. They're like a sieve. So if you think it's gonna rain or be heavy snow, I usually throw a tarp over the top of the whole thing and tie it down. Good morning. It is day three. I slept with these on last night. <laughs> Didn't even notice. Wow. All right, what are we looking at today? Today it is five degrees outside. So warmed up pretty good last night. It was just about 10 below zero when I fell asleep. And now it's five, it's quarter of five in the morning. Inside it is a brisk 38 degrees. That's with the heater running on low all night. Got the coffee pot started this morning. I think it snowed last night. I haven't looked outside yet, but just going by hearing some, hearing that little slide off the, the roof a couple times over the night makes me think that we got a dusting and usually when it warms up, it's it's cause it snowed. So I'm guessing we got an inch or so, or maybe just a dusting of snow. It's a lot warmer than it was yesterday morning. So I'm looking to have a great day today. We're gonna have some coffee this morning, some breakfast and kind of ease our way out into the day again. 38 degrees is not crazy warm for inside this tent, but it's a lot warmer than it is outside. As far as sleeping goes, I was really comfortable last night. My friends bought me this Cabela's sleeping bag that's really thick. You know, it's gotta be almost two inches thick. And it's, it's good for the cold. And then I threw a couple wool blankets on top of that just for added weight and to help hold some heat in. Got a man-sized cot underneath it, my sleeping bag over the cot. I brought some foam for this trip just cause my, my air pad oh, ran out of air. So uh, the foam seems to be working pretty well. It's not as thick as like a sleeping mat or an air pad, but it adds to that comfort level. So sleeping's been comfortable. Super quiet outside, which helps even more. I got thinking last night I could have shut the heater off and just dealt with a little bit more cold if I wanted to conserve on propane, but I brought a decent amount of propane for this trip. Keeping the heater on keeps a lot of the stuff from freezing. Not everything, you know, my water jug still froze that were in the corner the first night and some of the food cans froze too. If you're strategic about where you put stuff, it, it'll freeze less, you know, if you're running the heat. Right, nice little snowmobile ride this morning. Uh, just did a pilot hole out here when I got off the shore and there was a good seven, eight inches of ice. You know, a big fear of mine this whole trip is falling through anytime it is, but especially after the report I got from the Rangers and a lot of thin ice conditions, they said somebody fell through with a snowmobile the next lake up. Where I've been fishing, I've been on pretty good ice near the shore, but I wanna go a little deeper today. So I'm gonna start checking uh, some offshore spots for some togue and whitefish. up I just jigged this hole and there was some activity down there but I kind of messed it up I think when I was getting the sonar together and making a bunch of noise but before I left it I left a trap with a shiner down there and uh, there was some fish around so let's see what that is. Got him. 
doesn't feel very big. Not even fighting right now. <laughs> Took out a lot of line. A little toad maybe? Oh, white fish. Sweet. All right. Hook just popped right out. So they gotta be 16 inches to keep. I've never eaten a white fish. I'm really hoping he makes it. So I'm gonna get a measurement on him real quick. Oh my goodness, does he make it? Does he make it? It's gonna be so close. I gotta put this down. It is so close. Sixteen and a half. Cool. Got my first keeper whitefish. Sixteen and a half inches. That's exciting. Yes, sixteen and a half inches. I'm finally gonna taste whitefish. I'm excited. Nice fat fish. We'll dispatch him and get this reset up. Two white fish down there, all over that bait. He's on it. He's got it. He's got it. Watch that line. See that line moving? The flag's just about to go up. <laughs> what? How awesome is that? Does he still have it? Oh my god, that is so awesome. That was incredible. Let's catch this fish. Got him. Another whitey. <laughs> wow, that was awesome. Easy now, boy, easy. That was awesome. There were two of them down there. All right, we're gonna get him right back down. He's pretty close to a keeper, I bet, if not a keeper. Let's drop that minnow right back down. See if we can catch the other one. Hey, still alive. That was cool watching that line move to the side. <laughs> I've never seen that before. So w about 10 seconds before the flag went up, he was on there and he was doing like a big pendul pendulum swing before he could trip the flag. Pretty cool. That's what I use now to mark my line. It's just a little piece of a rubber band. It seems to stay put and if you need to change depth, you can just slide it down one way or another. With the electronics, I don't bother sound anymore because you can see exactly where your line is. You can see where your weight is, where your bait is. See, it's cool because you can see my nylon line. Then you can see my weight. Then you can see the bait underneath it and my swivel up here. And we're down in 30, almost 31 foot of water. A couple fish coming in hot on the bait. He's on it. Let's look and see if that line moves. Oh, he's all over it. There's a school of them. About five or six white fish down there. I'm gonna get the jigging rod in the hole next to it. Does not feel very big. A little bigger. Oh, no whitey. Little guy. All right. Whitey on the jig rod. He didn't eat the minnow. I wonder if they already stripped that minnow off that hook. There you go. Got him. 
<laughs> that was awesome. All right, they're getting smaller. <laughs> but man, they are active. They they really like that jig going instead of the instead of the shiner. Man, that's fun. Nothing on the screen right now. I gotta pull that up and see if that shiner's still on there. Another white fish. Put him back to get bigger. Nope. <laughs> That's why. Okay. That makes sense now. You can't outfish a shiner with a jig. Got him. <laughs> Jigged another keeper white fish. Wasn't recording though. That was awesome. That one fought pretty good. He's probably 16 and a half. Put him back. There's uh, three or four more down there. Got him. <laughs> he hit way up top. Big white fish too. Woohoo! Nice one. Another keeper. Wow, that guy stayed with it all the way from the bottom. That was crazy. They're kind of hard to hold on to. That school looked about all the same size. All right, that's another keeper right there, folks. Big white fish for, for me. That one's probably pushing 17, but we're gonna get him right back down. Hit something there pretty good. Might be a laker, I don't know. I was uh, keeping my trap up around 25 foot of, over 40 foot. This joker came flying in and smoked this thing. Came in like a white fish, that's the weird part. Got one heck of a fight. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> what a run. I can't even see him on the screen now. He's gone. We gotta work him back. Oh, here he comes. All right, he's down in 20 foot of water right now. About 20 feet away. Man. There he is. Still 20 foot deep. I can't seem to lift him any. Alright, got him started. I don't even know what the heck this thing is. There he goes again. Wow! Oh, I really want to catch this fish. Alright, he's 15, 18. We're at the leader. Now we're back off the leader. Man, this thing is kicking my butt. He is going crazy. It's big, whatever it is. <laughs> He's back down into 35 foot. I try to keep him off the bottom. This is a big fish. This is a giant, whatever it is. Man. <laughs> oh boy, do I want to catch this thing. There he goes. He's coming up. Got him back up to 25. He is just still spooling.
He looks long on the screen. It almost looks like two fish on the screen, but this is my first big one on the on the pan optic, so I don't know. I can't see a damn thing down that hole. It's getting close. Getting close. Oh, it's a big laker. It's a nice laker. Oh, there he goes again. It's a laker. Oh, what do you do? He just rolled. He just rolled. Okay. All right, we're going to try to get him over here and land him. This is what I came out to the deep water for, folks. Man. Oh, nice laker. Been a while since I caught one that big. Get started, get started. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Nice. Nice lake trout. All right. Let's, uh, Let's pop that hook out of him. What a fight that was. He's probably in the four pound range, I'm guessing. We'll get a quick measure on him and send him back down the hole. That sure was a lot of fun. A lot different than those white fish I was catching this morning, which I'm very happy to catch. 25 inches. I'm guessing he's going to be just under four. It's hard to judge trout when you're a bass guy. Three point nine four, so just under four pounds. He's bleeding, so we're going to get him back down. There he goes. All right. <laughs> Three point nine four pounds. That's not huge, but when you're catching a lot of little stuff like uh, you know, twelve, fifteen inch trout and uh, ten to seventeen inch whitefish, when you hit a two footer like that, it gives you a good fight like that. It really makes your day and fish like that could make your whole trip, so pretty fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna get back down there and try it again. I was I was just watching the pan optics. I, I saw a school of smelt over here. So I was jigging, oh, 20 feet up off the bottom and out of nowhere, out of like, maybe he was 15 foot deep. He came flying down, just jumped on that thing. And, uh, and then you got to see the whole fight. So let's try it again. Got him. Got him. <laughs> I reeled right up for it. I don't know what it is yet. Feels like a whitefish. It's not as big as that last one. I know that. That's a pretty good size. And it's starting to get bigger now. And I reeled it, put it right in that thing's face. It's gotta be a lake trout. Put it right in his face and he jumped on it. Lakers get a little funny around the hole. And try to end this thing before it turns into a big fight. Yeah, that's another decent Laker. <laughs> Got you, sucker. Got you, you rat face sucker. Don't you move. Let me get that.
another another nice toe. Look how dark these things are. Man, that's crazy how dark they are. It's got like red fins on it. Nice, nice, nice. We are into some deep fish. Oh, sweet. Let's let him go down. Oh, you can watch him on the screen. There he goes. Sweet. Another one. I like this deep water fishing. It's, it's, we're in the 40 foot range, but I've been brook trout fishing the last couple days because it's fun to catch and eat native Maine brook trout, but that's done in super shallow water. So I figured I'd come out here and just see what's out here because it's not really known for, for its uh, deep water fish this area where I'm in right now. So I figured I'd come out and look and see if I could catch a tog or catch a whitefish. And so far it's been a great day. Had a handful of whitefish, probably six or seven and and uh, two or three over the keeper size and two pretty nice tog right now. How's it going? It's going awesome, man. Are you filming or you're... Yeah. You filming? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, shoot. Did buddy show up? No, they're, they're probably going to come tonight. Okay. Yeah. What, what, what? Hey, How are you? What's up, bro? How much? How's it going? Good. Slushy. We just saw them two guys you talked to. Good. Yeah, they... slushy out there too, but... Is there ice? Yeah. They told yeah, me They we told me there was no ice. The first night we went on, it was seven inches. Did you guys fish today? No. No. Even ride? Ride? What's up? How are you doing, buddy? Good. What are you guys doing? Good to see you. Oh boy. That's been a fun day so far, let me tell you. Nice. Fun in a good way? Or? Yeah. Good. Boy, that's a nice tow sled. Okay, I'm back. It's nighttime, day three. Ran into some buddies of mine. That's pretty awesome. They're up for two days of fishing. We're gonna go brook trout fishing. I'm gonna join them tomorrow. They're sleeping in a camper, oh, 15 miles or so from here. We're gonna all meet up in the morning, see what we can do about putting some high numbers of brook trout and see if we can catch a big brook trout. So all in all, today was just an excellent day. I went out deep, got to use the Garmin Pan Optics, learned a lot on that, uh, put it to good use to catch a couple of Lake trout, quite a few white fish. Got my first keeper white fish, which I'm excited to eat. That baby's sitting right there. I gotta thaw it out, cause it's, uh, it froze up. Temperature right now is as mild as I've seen yet. It's 20 degrees above zero, which is pretty awesome. Not sure what tomorrow's gonna bring, but it's the first night it hasn't been zero or below uh, as soon as darkness hits. So I'm really excited about that. And that's about it. I'm gonna cook up, uh, cook up that white fish first, finish up. Jeff's moose that I ate half of a package last night. A good friend of mine, Jeff Osborne, I'll put a link right here in a card somewhere to his moose hunt of the moose that I'm eating. It was an awesome hunt. Second big one he shot with a bow and arrow and this hunt was really cool. He's got a YouTube video on it. If you like that kind of stuff, check him out and definitely subscribe to his channel too. 